can you reuse soil that synthetic nutrients were added into during a past growth cycle? If so, how would you go about reusing that soil? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, it's a little bit of a complicated answer. So first off, I want to say I'm an organic guy. So I, I stick to organic inputs. However, I, I'm not, um, I'm not cultish about it by any means. And so for people who are using chemical nutrients, I think there's a couple things that get misconstrued on the organic side. And the first one is, is that, uh, chemical nutrients or synthetic nutrients kill microbes and they ruin your soil. That's just simply not true. Um, if you put out too many and your soluble salt levels get too high, then yes, you can get osmotic shock. That, that makes it difficult for the microorganisms to survive. It can damage the roots. It's, just, it's why you don't run high EC um, anyway with, uh, with uh, synthetic salts. So uh, low levels of uh, mineral-based nutrients uh, actually are shown to increase microorganism activity um, and have benefits. And if you look at what like um, the giant pumpkin growers are doing, for example, they're doing a combination of organics and synthetics as a way of like maximizing their yield. So while personally I don't use those, uh, those products, I don't by any means just straight out say that they're bad if we're looking at it strictly from a soil fertility perspective. So you can absolutely reuse those soils. Now, the one thing to be aware of when you go to reuse those soils, um, if you have the capacity to do a soil test, that will tell you what sorts of availability you have, where what nutrients you have at sufficiency, and where you may need to uh, re-amend. Um, also, if you did apply high levels, like if you ran a full cycle of just um, synthetic nutrients, chemical nutrients, you may have... Um, soluble salt levels that are above what we want ideally for our next crop, depending on what we're growing next. You know, lettuces, for example, are going to need a lot less nutrients than tomatoes or peppers or corn. So you may want to flush that soil. So if you're not going to test, one easy way to reuse your media, whether it's organic or synthetic, is just to run a fair bit of water through it. Or if it's outside, it's, gonna, it's probably going to rain depending on where you are in the country. And so a lot of that is going to leach out anyway. Um, there are some environmental concerns about leaching phosphates and nitrates and things into our water supply. So uh, that's something to definitely be cognizant of. But if we're strictly talking about reusing that soil, you absolutely can. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. I actually asked the same question to Jeff Lowenfeld. Shout out to him. He, uh, excellent guest on podcast. I think you might've had him on your podcast in the past as well, but, uh, asked him about reusing soil where synthetic nutrients were used. He's like, add it to your compost pile, let the microbes work it down and uh, eventually work it back into your garden. So that's an, another alternative. But I like what you had mentioned that if somebody's looking to use that soil back to back, they don't have time to put it into a compost pile, for example, just flushing the medium. Yeah, Jeff's, Jeff's a good friend of mine. Uh, and he's he's a character too. He's great to have on podcasts. Or if you can ever hear him speak live, he's he's phenomenal. Um, what One thing I want to add to that is when we're talking about chemical nutrients, it's important to understand the, the pathway to plants when we are adding organic fertilizers versus uh, synthetic fertilizers. So if you're adding uh, chemical fertilizers, you're essentially skipping that microbe pathway. When you, you, they don't need to break that down. So um, you could add it to a compost pile. Um, I'm going to disagree with Jeff slightly on that in the sense that uh, the microbes don't really need to break it down because it's already in a plant available form. So unless it's leached through the soil, those plants are going to be able to access it. Um, when we apply something like alfalfa meal or fish meal or some sort of organic fertilizer, uh, for the most part, it needs to go through that microbial interaction, what's called the uh, microbial loop, where the, uh, the alfalfa meal gets broken down by the microorganisms, the bacteria, archaea, fungi, protozoa, and then through that prey and predation cycle, it gets converted into an ionic form, which your chemical fertilizer is already in. So um, it's just something to keep in mind. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrow at 15 to save on any of their products. Thank you.